Welcome back to Let Lucy Be Your Where today we're going to be looking at the emergency steering system. And so I'm starting up here in the bridge because of course ordinarily when everything is working fine we can steer using this wheel or we've got the autopilot system engaged and that system is using one of two pumps, pump A and pump B. Got the little control panel here. But what happens when those pumps stops working? that system stops working and then we need to switch to the emergency steering system which means we're going to go all the way back to the garage in order to engage the system and steer the yacht. So here we are down in the garage and right behind me are the rudders and the steering gear. So got a couple of hatches to open up to gain access and like I said before there are a couple of steering pumps pump A and pump B we saw the control panel up on the bridge and those pumps are actually located in this compartment here so I'm going to show you that first there you have pump A pump B if we're coming into port maneuvering both of those pumps will be switched on, just gives you that little extra bit of power and if one did fail for whatever reason the other one's already running. But normally just going along underway you'll only have one of the pumps on. So pump A, pump B and they are powering these rams here. So you can see the white pipes running in and out that's powering the ram and that's connected there to the starboard hand rudder just imagine that's a vertical post going straight down and the rudder is connected to that post in this plane so one ram to the starboard hand rudder that's connected by a bar all the way over to the port hand rudder which is also being powered by its own ram here but in the event that both of those pumps stop working we have to switch over to the emergency steering system which basically means isolating those pumps from the smaller emergency steering system those pumps are part of a much bigger system because the system is bigger it needs those pumps it needs those pumps to give you that pressure to allow you to have the helm all the way up on the bridge and the rudders back here because you've got the pumps helping you out you can have a big system like that but if they're not working and we're going to the emergency steering system that's much smaller that's just you on a little wheel here that I'm going to show you momentarily manually driving a pump you know, it's not an electric pump it is just you on this wheel going at it as fast as you can so you need a smaller system and that's where the emergency steering system comes in. Much smaller, so we need to isolate those pumps and then we can use the little wheel that I'm going to show you. So, how do we isolate it? Well, a little sign here that says emergency steering, turn all four valves fitted near the steering rams to vertical position to engage emergency steering wheel. So, one, and you can do these in any order, two, that's on the starboard hand side and then we come across and on this side three four we have now isolated those pumps and we're on emergency steering so let's head over to the wheel okay so it might be a little tricky to film this this is all quite tight Incidentally, the camera is now on the back of a jet ski, which is the same place in which the camera was when I filmed my very first videos, but I digress. Here we are. Here is the emergency steering station, as I call it. And here is that little wheel, and that's the wheel that is connected to this whole system that's gonna drive those rudders now. Up here, we have a heading indicator and also a rudder angle indicator. This is important because in practice the way this works is that the OOW or 
in this emergency situation is is likely to be the master it's going to be up on the bridge and it's going to be telling us here at the emergency steering station which heading to steer on and we can communicate with them using this little speaker here and this is basically an open channel so as long as up on the bridge they're not pressing to communicate with us it's just an open flow so they can hear everything that we're doing down here if they want to speak with us they simply press the press to talk button and then we can hear them through the speaker i've always thought oh, this is uncomfortable i've always thought easy to get into trouble with this because right now if up on the bridge someone decided they wanted to open up this communication channel they could do that and i would never get an alert and they could hear everything an interesting point to consider if you're having a conversation that you don't want anybody else to hear uh, i'm not saying anyone would but they could all right then so let's get on the wheel and it simply is a case of turning to starboard or turning to port but remember what i said before this is not got any electrical powered pumps this is you being the power for the pump that's behind there which is going to turn those rudders as a result you need to do a lot of turns to make the rudders move There's a little label here 30 full turns from midships to hard over that's an awful lot more than what it is on the bridge so that's why well it's not the only reason but it's one of the reasons that we do these drills when the yacht is underway because it gives the crew a chance to see what it actually feels like to try and keep the yacht on a steady heading using a wheel that requires so many turns in either direction just to get the rudders moving a little bit in order to stay on the heading that you've been given by the bridge. So, to show it to you, what I'll do is split the screen. We'll have me turning the wheel on the one side and the actual movement of the rudders on the other side. That's much better than trying to show you with this little digital rudder angle indicator up here. So, here we go. We are amidships and I'm gonna go hard over to starboard. A lot of work. And now I'll come back to midships. And as I say, quite a lot of work. And remember, we're just in port at the moment, but it's not even moving. Imagine you're going along, you've got a following sea. That's midships. Imagine you've got a following sea, so there's already a lot of force coming from the stern of the yacht, pushing it this way and that, and you're trying to keep on a steady heading. You've got a lot of work to do, and this is further highlighted when all systems are up and running. If you come down here, unfortunately, I haven't got any video to show you this, but when the yacht's on autopilot, especially in a following sea, you come down here and see how hard the rudders are working. Just fine little adjustments all the time, all the time. Pumps working hard just to keep a steady heading. So you've basically got to try and mimic that fine degree of, of control using this wheel, which requires all those turns just to make the rudder move, or rather the rudders move a little bit. And that's about it. As I mentioned in my last video, it's sometimes a bit of a quirky process to change over to the emergency steering. I've made it look easy here because the yacht is winterized and there's no tender in here. And usually there's teak boards across all of this. And then to get in there, you've got a bit more work to do. But at the moment, it's quite easy. Uh, I've worked on other yachts where, although it might not have been so difficult to change over to the emergency steering, actually standing at 
the emergency steering helm is really difficult. You're sort of down in a hole or you're kind of cramped between various pieces of uh, technical equipment. Here we've actually got quite a nice setup. Um, well, no, I had to just balance the camera on the back of a jet ski. That's not so easy, but actually standing there and steering that wheel is is pretty cruisy compared to what I've seen on some other yachts. It's something that you will most certainly do working out on deck. Uh, there will be emergency steering drills every three months and once we've done them we fill out the official logbook to say that we've done the drill or at least the steering check and that everything is in good order and of course now that we've done this, I mustn't forget to switch back over to the normal steering system. So I'm going to switch those red valves back. That means that those pumps are now going to be connected up to the bigger system. And when everything gets fired up and we test the steering from the bridge and from the bridge wings, that's all going to work. As always, thank you so much for watching and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one.